Hi everybody, I am Douglas Stewart and I am the author of the novel Shaggy Bane uh, with its beautiful cover and shiny gold foil and it is my pleasure to talk to you today about some of the works of Scottish fiction that I just absolutely love. Ooh, it's quite a stack. Uh, but these are books that I love as a reader but that have also had a huge influence on me as a writer. And so let's just dive in. The first book in my selection is Young Adam by the amazing Alexander Trockey. This is a book that was initially published in the 1950s, and it tells the story of Joe, who is a barge hand working the canal that runs between Glasgow and Edinburgh, a very short canal. Uh, but one morning the book opens and Joe finds the body of a young dead woman floating in the water. Uh, we are led to believe that the woman is a stranger to Joe, but as the book unfolds, we learn that Joe knows more than he is letting on. Uh, the book sort of takes us through the working class life of these barge hands, which is a, just a beautiful portrait in itself. But uh, within the sort of the claustrophobic environment of the barge, Joe sets about to seduce his boss's wife, Ella. So in this really confined space is a really sort of uh, up close, startling sexual portrait of a man and a woman. Um, I think what's amazing about this book is Trocky gives us a totally irredeemable hero. Joe turns out to be a user, to be a coward, to be someone that's only really interested in his own survival, and yet Trocky makes us care for him very deeply and sort of worry about what will happen to him. Um, all the characters in Trocky's book seem destined to unhappiness, being sort of uh, self-serving, uh, almost unfeeling creatures. But I think it's actually a really frank look at how men and women can sometimes use each other, um, regardless of finer feelings. Um, and the author kind of shows us how sex can be a currency and how when you have nothing else to barter, then sort of coupling can take on a desperate mercenary need of its own. It's a really wonderful book. The next book on my list is The Incredible Morvern Caller by Alan Warner. Um, and although I don't have favourites amongst my favourites, this book uh, really means something very, very special to me. Uh, it is the portrait of Morvan, who is a shelf stacker in a local supermarket in an anonymous uh, west coast port town of Scotland. Um, but Morvan awakes one morning and finds that her long-term boyfriend has committed suicide and left an unpublished manuscript behind him. Uh, he has left her instructions on how to submit it to his publisher, but instead of doing that for him, she actually changes the name on it to her own and then sets about to hide and then dismember his body. As the plot unfolds in the book, and I won't give you too many spoilers, what we really are given is uh, a sort of a portrait or the story of a woman who is trying to escape the sort of small town suffocating life she has in this sort of very rainy, grey, damp place. The second half of the book takes her to these really incredible sunnier climbs and you really get this sort of sense of a character expanding and just almost breathing for the first time in their lives. And that's really the magic of the book. Um, the thing that I really love about Alan Warner's writing is sort of the insistent, almost poetic beat of his prose. It's a, quite, a, quite a thin book, quite a quick story, but the way he sort of writes in very spare, sparse prose is just really rhythmical. Um, and it's just beautiful to read. Um, I think also what's really sort of surprising about it is he writes about the horror of death and the horror of loss and even um, some of the horrific things that Morvan does in order to survive within the book, but he writes about it in a very sort of matter-of-factly way because sometimes at the end of the day all the character can do to cope with the dire situation is sort of move through it and get through it, uh, you know, sort of grief and anguish not being a thing that every single person can afford. I love Morvan Keller. The next book or the next writer on my list is actually Agnes Owens. I have here her short novella For the Love of Willie and another great place to start with her is A Working Mother. But the book I wanted to talk to you about today is actually called Gentlemen of the West and it's perhaps her most famous work. Uh, Gentlemen of the West is the story of Mac. It's an episodic tale of Mac, who is an out-of-work Glaswegian bricklayer. Um, he is struggling to find direction and employment in a city that has um, been totally blighted. Uh, you know, Mac sort of reminds me of all the young men I grew up around who was surviving on government housing schemes and on government benefits, and how when everything seems hopeless, it's human to ask, why would you even bother? 
you know, in the book, Max's narrow life moves between sort of obliteration down at the corner pub with this really often hilarious chorus of characters. Uh, and he goes from the pub back up to his mother's small tenement flat, where you're given this really intimate portrait of a mother and son, sort of a little bit at each other's throats, but also sort of depending on each other to get by. Um, like I said, it's often quite a sad or quite a moving book, but it's told with so much warmth and so much tenderness and so much humour that it's just a really delightful read. Um, you know, I think Agnes Owens, why she means a lot to me is because she was a true working class writer. She was, for most of her life, a house cleaner and the mother of seven. And what that really brings to her writing is it makes her one of the most detailed observers of working class life. Uh, she's also quite unique on the landscape because when you think about all the amazing sort of West Coast fiction that is sort of set against a blighted landscape or a post-industrial landscape, Agnes Owens brings the real sort of tenderness and warmth of a mother that really just brings another dimension to, to the writing and it's really something not to be missed. So if you can, please check out anything by Agnes Owens. The next book on my list is The Trick is to Keep Breathing by Janice Galloway. Actually, anything by the wonderful Janice Galloway, but the book that means the most to me, I think, is The Trick is to Keep Breathing. Um, I'm a little bit embarrassed to say that the first time I read this book, I was in college, I was a young man in college, and most of it actually whizzed past me or went over my head because it is such an intimate, clear look at the inner uh, psychological state of a woman. But the book, uh, The Trick is to Keep Breathing, focuses on the story of Joy, which is a little bit of a misnomer, uh, who is essentially unraveling following the death of her mother and also the drowning of her illicit lover, her boyfriend. Um, and what we really get is sort of uh, a woman who is shrinking into herself and isolating herself from the world as she descends into uh, mental illness through anorexia and alcoholism. Although that sounds like quite a dark thing to read, the book is oftentimes incredibly funny. And why it means a lot to me is because obviously there's a very rich scene in Northern fiction um, of the struggling soul or the alcoholic, but he is oftentimes in sort of in that landscape, um, a man, and as a man, we can ultimately forgive him. I always think it's slightly more shocking and it, there's so much taboo around it in society when we look at a woman who is also destroying herself in a similar way. But the truth is, is uh, part of why I wrote Shuggy and sort of part of the experience I bring to the page is I grew up around disintegrating women. In sort of Glasgow of the 80s and 90s, there was often mothers who were sort of buckling under the weight of having nothing better to look forward to. And so that's sort of part of the reason why the trick is to keep breathing resonates with me. And certainly, um, you know, in writing this book, Janice Galloway gave me strength and gave me courage uh, to set the story of Agnes Bain on the page for myself. I love this book, the trick is to keep breathing. What list would be complete without Train Spotting by Irvin Welsh? Uh, this book is certainly a masterpiece. And if you feel like you know everything about the book because you've seen the movie, I urge you to go back and read the actual book itself because that's certainly where all the magic happens in terms of character and in terms of prose. Uh, we, you know, through the book, we follow a clutch of Edinburgh junkies and loose friends as they weave in and out of episodes in each other's lives. And some are comedic and some are just utterly tragic. Uh, we are drawn to the protagonist, Mark Renton or Renton, um, who is a sort of nihilistic young man. Uh, he is railing against conformity and he seems to be sort of destroying himself, even though he has so much to live for. Um, my relationship with Trainspotting is actually quite complicated because I am a boy who lost his mother to addiction. And so when the book came out, I was about 16 or 17 and I almost couldn't handle it. Um, then when the movie became such a cult classic, uh, it seemed to sort of glamorize addiction. And so it took me a long time to sort of get over myself and be able to come back to the book. But I am so glad I, I, I did. Um, so when I read it for the first time uh, all the way through, probably about 10 or 15 years ago, I was just absolutely blown away. Like I said, the language and the prose in the book is stunning, but some of the more memorable scenes, some of the, uh, the more sort of like devastating 
character moments actually happen around the scourge of HIV and the onset of that throughout the city. And those were left on the page and never made it to the screen. So I'm urging you, if you think you already know everything about train spotting, please uh, read the book. It is an absolute masterpiece. Much like Agnes Owens, the next author I wanted to talk about was George Friel. Uh, George Friel was a writer, a Scottish writer, who was working from the 50s through the 70s. Uh, and much like Agnes Owens, he was a working class writer, having been a school teacher his entire life. Uh, he has, uh, I think his, probably his most famous work is Mr. Alfred M.A., but in a collection of his short stories called the Glasgow Trilogy, which can actually be quite hard to find today, there is a story or a novella called Grace in Mrs. Partridge, which means an awful lot to me. Um, at its heart, it's a story of a cast of characters who are living in an East End Glasgow tenement, uh, Grace being a young girl, uh, doing what young girls do, and Mrs. Partridge being the spinster, quite a spinster, reclusive character, living at the top of the tenement. Uh, Mrs. Partridge sort of, first of all, sort of takes an interest in Grace because Grace seems to be uncared for. Uh, but the interest soon starts to turn incredibly dark and sinister as Mrs. Partridge thinks it would be her duty to release uh, Grace from this mortal coil. Uh, what is really beautiful about the book and what means a lot to me is actually the cast or the chorus of characters that live within the Glasgow tenement. And there's some really beautifully rendered scenes of sort of just men drinking in the pub or what it meant to be like to sort of escape your working class roots and go study or what it meant to be like to be a woman sort of uh, looking for sexual adventure in 1960s Glasgow. Um, and it's such a beautifully rendered character study. So check it out, Grace and Mrs. Partridge, uh, which you can find in the Glasgow Trilogy. The next book is uh, How Late It Was, How Late by James Kelman. Uh, it is a really incredibly vibrant book that won the Man Booker Prize when it was published and uh, courted some controversy because of that, controversy that I don't think it deserved. Uh, how Late It Was, How Late is the story of Sammy, who is a really sort of problematic, mouthy Glaswegian drunk. He has woken up in a police prison cell, which doesn't seem out of the ordinary for Sammy, but he has woken up uh, absolutely completely blind. Um, and then what sort of unfolds from there only gets stranger as we follow Sammy as he sort of travels across the city, trying to cope with his new disability, uh, trying to survive and also trying to locate his missing girlfriend. Um, it's a really fascinating book that sort of looks at real sort of Glaswegian characters. And Sammy is a really lovable uh, rogue who sort of is dealing with both paranoia and inefficient bureaucracies and also malevolent policemen. Uh, like I said, when, when I first came to this book, I was made aware of sort of the controversy um, it had stirred up because it is written in a broad Glaswegian prose and it has all the dialect and patter that you would understand from the working class people of Glasgow. Um, I actually think it's a really um, startling, unflinching, unapologetic book, and I think that's why it's singular. You know, sometimes when we talk about diversity in publishing, it doesn't always necessarily extend to the working class or to the real people of that class. And so I think the controversy was really misplaced around this book because everything that Kelman wrote, he wrote brilliantly and he wrote in truth, and that is really the power of the book. Um, how Late It Was, How Late is an absolutely unforgettable piece of fiction. Another book I really admire is His Bloody Project by Graham McRae Burnett. Uh, it is a work of historical fiction and it was long listed for the Man Booker Prize in 2016. It is uh, part portrait of the main character and then part uh, crime procedural, I guess. Uh, but it focuses on the triple brutal murder that uh, is said to have taken place in 1869 in a rural crofting community in Scotland. Uh, the book follows the main character of Roderick McRae, who is a bright young schoolboy who has all the potential in the world and the ability to go on with his education. But because of the hardships and the hard scrabble life of subsistence crofting, he is unable to be spared from the land by his father and his sister, who both need him. Uh, what then sort of follows is a really sort of claustrophobic look at how suffocating life can be 
in isolated communities when there's only maybe 10 to 20 people within your community. Um, it's a book that sort of escalates through a lot of um, petty slights and uh, sort of bad behaviour between neighbours and between the structure of landowners uh, within the Scottish system. But what I really love about the book, um, it's just beautifully written and it pulls you through in a really uh, propulsive fashion. But what I really love about it is how it upends the usual romantic uh, notion of what it was like to live in sort of rural Scotland. And instead, it gives you this portrait of what it can be like to be swallowed up by small places. The next book is The Young Team by Graham Armstrong. And this is a real sort of cracker of a book. It's a real firework, uh, not only in terms of sort of what it covers within the book, but uh, with the dialect and the vernacular that it's written in. It really burns on the page. But The Young Team is the story of a gang called The Young Team, but the main character is Azzy Williams, who is uh, a sort of directionless teenager growing up in the housing estates of North Lanarkshire. Uh, as he is already into all kinds of mischief, he's sort of drinking and he's smoking and he's coming into his manhood and trying to assert himself. Uh, but the book focuses on a sort of rolling territorial gang warfare uh, and the sort of the ceaseless sort of chibbings and stabbings and fighting that they do with the young toy, which is the gang from uh, the, the neighbouring housing scheme. Uh, it's a really important part of working class Scottish culture and I love that, uh, that Graham set it on the page. But what it also is, is a really sort of clear-eyed look at masculinity, um, about the bonds and the divisions that sort of bring young men together and pull them apart. Um, but one of the parts of the book that really sort of stuck with me was sort of the, the sort of the thwarted prospects or the shame that Azzy sometimes felt when he starts to date uh, a girl from a slightly better class who has all of these uh, university friends. And sort of, he can feel them judge his limited prospects, his education, his potential for the future. And that really sort of um, got me in the heart. Uh, so this is The Young Team by Graham Armstrong, and it is a real cracker of a book. So that's it. That is my list of Scottish fiction that I both love as a reader and also as a writer. Um, and I am Douglas Stewart, and this is my novel Shaggy Bane, and thank you so much for listening to me ramble on. All right, be well.